What's up guys, this is Big Mike from MarlonCaller.com here at the 2020 King of the Hammers. Thought I'd walk you by and show our RCLT display. We got uh, two complete driver side setups here. Factory on the right, our RCLT HD, this is our third prototype on the left. It's uh, quite the striking difference. Got a sweet collection of uh, factory tie rod ends that I've been uh, rescuing rigs on the trail and trading out parts for. Those are really fun to have. And of course, um, the poor steering link on a factory setup compared to just our super beefy uh, Mar rack setup. It's uh, quite, quite extreme. We've got the double shear. This is all one piece billet, uh, billet steel. Double shear to the wheel bearing and also to the brake caliper. It's all one piece. Uh, no plate steel at all for all that steering. And we've now gone from a half inch bolt now up to a 5 8 inch bolt for the double shear. That's 5 8 inch hardware on that heim joint. That is uh, some beefy steering there. Uh, we're now incorporating an adjustable caster. So we've got spacers here in this third version prototype where we have a plus or minus one degree caster shift. You can double stack. Uh, your spacers to bring your knuckle forward or rearward for a two degree total caster change. So uh, the point there is being that because the upper arm is at about a 14 degree slope, if as you lift the truck, you lose casters. So if you wanna run like 37 or even 40 inch tires, you're gonna find that you run out of caster. But if we can make this kit be compatible with even a vehicle only running 33s, then they can still move the arm, the other the knuckle, the other direction to regain their caster. And then we've got uh, my 2016 Tacoma here. We've got a poster board. Let's see if I can just come into this. You can pause the video, kind of read these cool, cool specs on RCL THD at your leisure. And then uh, here we are. It's a little dark here. Let's see if I can get this to adjust. So here it is, version three prototype installed two days ago, drove it here to the hammers. Uh, with Tailwind, I made 22 miles per gallon with 40 inch tires in this uh, V6 3.5 liter 2016 Tacoma. Kit's coming together really nice, really excited about this. And so you can see here how I've got uh, double stacked on the caster. So I'm trying to gain caster by kicking the knuckle back. And that's important because of how much I have this truck lifted to clear 40 inch tires. So the body mount, what's, what's cool to point out here is that uh, the factory bolt on the body mount has not even been touched. Uh, and this, I'm clearing 40s. And the 40 just barely touches. So a 37 for sure will fit without any modifications to the body mount bracket, the actual frame bracket. I had originally done this prior to having, you know, this really great suspension back in the past. This wasn't even available. So we, we've moved the knuckle forward two inches so we can clear 37s without any trimming. But by going so far forward, it interferes with the factory steering. So this is where we have our MAR rack, our super heavy duty uh, steering solution for late model 2002 newer SUV and 2005 newer Tacoma pickup trucks. So this is it. Uh, we've also um, a change too that you may not notice at first is that because we're a double shear on the steering, there's no place to put the ABS sensor. So I've swapped the ABS sensor to the brake caliper side, putting it inside the brake caliper. So what's nice is we can just run the ABS line straight down the brake line and a real nice clean install on that. And then plenty of room here to have your air bump for a bump stop. And then we also now have our uh, secondary shock mount. So you can put a double bypass shock and do the stuff you wanna do there if you like to go fast. Um, this truck, of course, built for rock crawling. And I can show you over here details on that ABS. So from the factory, uh, the ABS sensor is on the steering side of the knuckle. But because you know our steering is just so massive, uh, there's there's just no place to put it. We were not able to keep them on the center line, which is perfectly fine. All kinds of room here on the brake caliper side. Of course, RCLT. Great benefit would be um, the ground clearance. So because we've uh, brought the main arm even higher than the center line of your frame pivot, we have all kinds of space here. And you know, compared to the factory arm, you have all of this just hanging down. And so now our CLT gives you all this ground clearance. 
and we've now incorporated a fourth bin on the, the uh, first and second prototype. We only had three bins here. Now we've got a fourth bin, so we've smoothed out. This angle right where my finger is used to come down and then over. Now we've got an extra bin here for an even smoother profile. It's really nice, it's coming along really well. We've got this really cool stainless steel badge now on here. Our CLT HD. Really exciting. All right, guys, Big Mike from MarlonCaller.com again. We just brought in car 4602. This is our Everyman Challenge car that we're sponsoring here with RCLT HD. This is a V8 powered Toyota 4Runner running in the uh, stock class. And of course, we've got our awesome third prototype RCLT HD down in here. They've been doing a lot of testing. This is looking great. Here's a uh, shot of their bump stop setup on this one. That bump stop was installed on the first prototype. Changes on the lower arm have been made since. It's a, been a lot of fun. So another thing uh, to mention too with RCLT is that uh, it's it's 99% bolt-on. So the only things that aren't bolt-on are the limit straps, which I suppose could be optional, but you of course would want to run those. You have to weld the upper mount onto the chassis, and then for the, our heavy-duty steering our rack and pinion, our MAR rack, you have to weld a sleeve into the frame. But the nice thing about that sleeve is that it's welded in a new location that does not interfere with the factory uh, Tacoma or 4Runner or Lexus GX uh, rack. So you can still take RCLT completely off, reattach all your factory components, put your factory suspension back on there, then you could sell the truck uh, if you wanted to change from a 4Runner from a platform to a different platform, you could still take off our CLTHD and transfer it uh, to another vehicle very easily. So, great, we got 4602 here. This is really great. All right, guys, talk to you later. Thanks for watching the short overview of our new and upcoming RCLT HD suspension and steering system. Since this video was recorded, Steel City Racing's 4Runner, running our third and final prototype shown, went on to finish 10th overall in the Everyman Challenge, becoming the first stock class IFS rig to run both desert laps and rock crawling trails, as well as setting the highest finish ever for an IFS rig. RCLT HD was designed to be the first Toyota long travel kit strong enough for rock crawling and is now the only long travel kit capable of surviving the hardest and most abusive single day off-road race on the planet. Huge congrats to Charles, Matt, and the entire Steel City Racing team. Before we close, I'd like to mention three additional benefits of RCLT HD not mentioned in the video. First, because we had to build new knuckles strong enough for rock crawling, it gave us the ability to create improved knuckle geometry specifically tailored for lifted applications. Our design enables your tires to hold their alignment throughout a much greater range of travel, previously not possible with long travel kits reusing factory knuckles. Next, because we've both greatly pushed the knuckle forward and extended steering arm length, the tire rod ends are now in front of the steering rack, which provides a progressive rate of inside tire turn-in. This benefit is only maximized at full steering lock, which aids in cutting sharp corners at slow rock crawling speeds. And because IFS out corners most all solid axle swaps, it's a win-win. This steering geometry is very common on race vehicles, UTVs, and even competition RC rock crawlers, yet has no effect to normal highway speeds where steering input is minimal. As an added bonus, the longer steering arms increase steering power so the driver doesn't have to fight the wheel as much, a welcomed benefit when using large aired down tires. And an opposite benefit is that objects contacting your tires cause reduced forces acting on steering components upstream. RCLT HD greatly increases steering strength while at the same time reduces forces that its heavy duty components experience. And finally, because RCLT HD is a complete system overhaul, it has gone way, way beyond the capability of all typical long travel kits. Not only did we develop new lifted suspension geometry, 
but we've also developed new steering geometry not possible with factory steering or trucks using narrowed tundra racks. The kit shown in this video is our third and final prototype and has 240 individual components. This isn't just some heavy duty long travel. It's over a year and a half of all new patent pending, never before accomplished, integrated steering and suspension, rock crawling design and geometry with extreme and repetitive rock crawling testing, resulting in the only IFS system worthy of the Marlin Crawler heritage. Thank you for watching and staying with us till the end. The demand for this setup is quite broad, from people only looking to run 33s to even two-wheel drive high-speed desert racers who desire stronger steering. Some users won't need the many rock crawling benefits RCL THD brings, but it's great to know that if the kit is holding up to daily plus cross-country driving to and from rock crawling trails in Texas, Utah, Colorado, and California, with Big Mike's 40 inch tire, triple transfer case equipped Tacoma, and now surviving the king of the hammers with an iForce V8, then it's gonna be a bulletproof setup for everyone else. Cheers.